Hi, in this video, I'd like to tell you a bit more about the details of our new organic chemistry curriculum at the University of Ottawa. So one of the reasons that motivated the change of this curriculum was the fact that we found that students were memorizing reaction after reaction after reaction, but just looking at the surface level, not understanding why and how these reactions really took place and making themselves um, all sorts of tables, memorizing rules, um, using decision trees, rather than really understanding the fact that reactions really work by a, a set, of, a fundamental set of principles and patterns. And what was important to us in this was that students be able to use their chemistry knowledge. And we didn't want students getting to the point in their later courses or their careers uh, or in their everyday lives where they didn't understand how molecules worked in vaccines or what homeopathy was, um, or how to leverage their knowledge for local or global issues like the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And so there are a few different principles that guided the change that we had in this curriculum. We started at the curriculum with regular structure property relationships. Building on that, the first reaction was that in the first semester of organic chemistry was an acid-base reaction, including about principles of resonance, at that point, the students learned just very simple collisions between nucleophiles and pi-based electrophiles. Just very simple one-step um, connection reactions with perhaps a deprotonation or protonation at the beginning or end. So the curriculum started out by, uh, in a typical way, by looking at structure of property relationships. Then in the first semester of organic, it went into the uh, typical acid-base reactions, uh, including uh, concepts of resonance. Students then learned their first uh, major reaction, which were the collisions between pi electrophiles and various nucleophiles. So this could include um, things like uh, Grignard reactions, uh, sodium borohydride reductions. Next, they looked at pi nucleophiles with a variety of electrophiles, and then into the aromatic pi nucleophiles, again, with a variety of electrophiles. In second year is when they then saw the reactions of sigma electrophiles. Now these are quite simple looking functional groups, but in fact can undergo a wide range of reactivity. And so this is where the SN1, SN2, E1, E2 reactions came in, as well as oxidation reactions, which take place um, with a key step that takes place through uh, an E2 type step. Next then in the reactivity uh, was again revisiting pi electrophiles, but this time with ones bearing leaving groups. So that would be the carboxylic acid and derivative type reactions, as well as acetals and analogs. The last section of the curriculum involves kind of souped up pi electrophiles with the enols, enolates, and analogs with a variety of electrophiles of the types they'd seen previously in the course. We also have a structure determination section of NMR and IR um, in the second semester of the course. So these changes were really inspired by two key colleagues. One was Keith Fagnew, who when, uh, when, he, when he taught the first year organic course, really wanted to start with very simple principles of reactivity. It's the very principles of reactivity that led him down his career path. The other person was Tony Durst, who for decades of teaching organic chemistry, um, spoke to the fact that it didn't make sense to teach these really complex reactions, competing reaction pathways, all sorts of different things that could happen, right as you, typically this, the first real reaction that students saw. He said, you know what, they can learn that, but let them learn it later. Let them learn simple principles of reactivity first. And notice that in the curriculum, there are no uh, radical reactions and uh, reactions that might typically be in a first and second year semester of organic chemistry, like the Diels-Alder reaction or ozonolysis, they've been moved to the third semester of organic chemistry where we can take a frontier molecular approach in depth. So in my research group, we've been studying student learning in chemistry and in part in this new curriculum. And the results are really exciting. Some of the things we've seen is that students are more proficient solving mechanism questions, uh, both familiar and unfamiliar questions in the new curriculum than in the old. We look at how they organize their thinking around patterns of reactivity, to what extent it's surface level versus deeper, the how and the why of reactions. We look at the effect of chemistry's language, all the, all the symbols and representations that we use and how that affects their understanding of chemistry. What their mental models are, so how they visualize molecules and collisions, reactions at the molecular level. 
how they explain the how and the why of reactivity, what evidence they leverage, the sophistication of their arguments, and also how they extend that knowledge towards more sophisticated um, and, and broader concepts such as the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And in all of this, we hope that if they're learning through patterns and principles, rather than memorizing an unrelated set of, of reactions or a seemingly unrelated set of reactions, that their beliefs and their own abilities will also be higher in this new curriculum. They'll have the tools in hand to solve problems, even if they don't necessarily know um, the reaction itself. They have the tools to figure it out. So if you're interested in knowing more, I'll, I'll invite you to continue to explore the, the website, flynnresearchgroup.com. Thanks.